Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Twilight Struggle. This is a two-player board game from real life, that this is a digital version of it, where one player plays as the Soviets, one plays as the Americans, and they aim to control the world. We're halfway through our game here. I am playing as the Soviets in this game, and currently have a pretty big score lead, actually, which is wonderful. Again, the Soviets do tend to score a lot early on. The Americans get stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Theoretically, the game will last uh, 10 total turns. We are on turn five over here. Um, it can also end early through a variety of different ways, including if someone gets a total of 20 points. If the Americans score points, this is a like a tug of war. If they score points, it just brings us back down towards zero. And eventually, if they keep scoring points, it'll start they'll start earning neck points on their side. So in theory, if I can earn eight points without them earning a single one, I will win the game, but that's fairly unlikely. We're at the start of uh, round five. We have to both headline a card to play for the events. All negotiation improves the outcome two levels. And hurts coups for both players. Let me throw through the discard pile, reclaim a non core scoring card, revealing it. What's in the discard pile? I could use this to pick up, say, something like one of our good four point events, like we will bury you. Which is probably what we do. We just pick up a four ops card. I kind of like that. Now, increase in DEFCON level will open up the possibility of a lot of coups this turn, but it might also be a good time for me to play, to get rid of duck and cover. So I'm going to headline this. He's going to get some influence spread out. Defcom is level 5. Uh, we're going to pick up We Will Bury You. Uh, we'll commit the decision, that's fine. So yeah, and he's going to add influence to a bunch of places. Colonial Rearguard. That's his way back into something like Africa, for example, right? Because right now, um, other than from Ethiopia into Somalia, he had no way to place any influence whatsoever in Africa. Oh, he's using it to break Thailand. Okay, and then over there, which is kind of to be expected. So I think what I want to do is I want to start with Duck and Cover. Um, I want to activate the event first to minimize how many victory points he gets from it. And then I will use it probably to do a coup. So we'll let him resolve the event first. So it's going to go from 5 to 4, and he'll earn 5 minus 4, so 1 victory point. There we go. We've held on to this card from the beginning. And then we want to drop some coup. Or realignment? No, probably coup. I mean, we could do a big coup in Colombia. Um, we could just play it for influence, but I don't think so. I, I feel like I might want to coup him out of Thailand here. I'm quite pleased with this, I'd say. Defcom's at three. We have three mil ops. We don't have to do more. He might coup in his turn, which would drop it to two. Which would end sort of the uh, the battleground cooing stage of the game. Yes and no. Um, we can do we can sneak something in with the uh, submarines later on, but we'll see. <laughs> well, sneak something in. So uh, this gives the U.S. the ability to coup battlegrounds without affecting Defcom. So it unlocks his ability to do a lot more cooing later on. Um, if we play it as a lax action, he'll get one turn where that could be in effect. Hunter. Okay. Defcom two. So we have no scoring cards. Theoretically, he might. Um, okay, so UK, the US does not control more battlegrounds, so we could actually play this safely. I could have maybe headlined this. I don't know. I think I think not. I don't know. But we want to use this while the US does not have more battleground countries than me, which the X should be indicating. We could do a manual count, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, so the sooner I sort of blow this, the better, probably. But it is a weak card otherwise. What if I use you to coup Nicaragua over here? Ah, failed. Boo! Now, that card, um... What the hell was it called? Uh, Kitchen Debates. I think these are sorted numerically in here. Yeah, Kitchen Debates is still there. Because the event didn't trigger, it hasn't been removed from the game. It's only in the discard, but still. Does he have Africa scoring? Asia hasn't been scored either. Right now, you're looking big there. We've got the China card. Hmm. We could flip one of these nations. I could play into India. I mean, at some point, the... Um, 
the Pakistan India war thing will come up. But I could play three in India. Um and and what? And then one somewhere else or two in Asia. But there's not really much going on. Maybe we'll hold on for it for now. See if he does anything else. I mean I could coup something like Malaysia, but I don't know if there's much point in doing that. It's not a battleground, so I'm, I'm able to do it. Uh, the skirmish here, yeah, that's rough. If the US has a China card, which it doesn't right now. So if I play this, he'll get the China... Oh, yeah, I really don't want this to trigger. Yeah, we're not using this through the event. I think maybe we just spread some love down here. Take Brazil. And then I can't go any further. Um, and take Algeria. I think I like that idea. Play influence. We'll get you there. And we'll get you there. I mean, they're they're cooable. Well, except they can't. They're battlegrounds, and he's got the DEFCON. But other than that, like, there's other ways. Again, he might get one chance at a coup with the nuclear subs because I think we're gonna dump it as our final um, play of the of the turn. <laughs> You're really looking for ways to get rid of the starred events when it is as safe as possible. Ah, Nixon plays a China card. So, uh, okay, he's just playing it for itself. If he played it for the event, he actually would have stolen the China card from us, which would be annoying. I can play defectors. It'll give the U.S. a victory point, which isn't really a problem. All these, these U.S. events is kind of rough. We can at least send one to space. Place influence. I'm wondering about going one, two, three, South Africa. We could place an influence somewhere just to get, um, we'd get domination in Africa, right? Oh, no, we don't. Really? Oh, no, it's two battlegrounds each. That'll be a third. Wait, hold on. Oh, but then it comes down to number of nations. Yeah. Okay. I still might be okay. Um, place influence. Do that. So taking uh, Zimbabwe doesn't help us right away. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put one in Uruguay, so that we can then expand into Argentina afterwards. Now this is cool, but it's not a battleground place. I don't know how big of a deal it is to leave that there. It'd be a little annoying, but then we can coup it right back. Okay. I guess that's the thing with the coup game. With the battleground, it's a little dangerous because once Death Gone gets too low, you can't coup it back. But here, we'll just be able to do that if they want to play that way. If they don't, what I'll probably do is dump some points in Argentina. Coup? One point coup, yeah. I'm going to say. Just want to target some low stability countries, but we still have control over there, so that's fine. I'm going to play defectors right now. We'll grab Argentina before we lose like anything in Uruguay. And we'll be a little bit more secured over there. There you go. Take your victory point. That's fine. So right now, we get five points in Europe. I mean, Middle East has already been scored. But we just get four points there. Asia, we'd get a point. Southeast Asia, they would get a point. Africa, we'd get one. We'd get three over here. We'd get two there. South African unrest is going to trigger. So this could give me two influence in South Africa, or I'll take the other one, which is one in South Africa and two in an adjacent one. So we'll take that, which will bring this to four, which is going to give me security. And yeah, we'll go ahead and do this, which will give me a non-battleground province over here too, and try to shift things a little bit more my way. I think... Um, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I have one, two, three, four. Oh, okay. He actually has one more province than I do. One more nation. I have one more battleground. But yeah, if we want domination, we'd have to grab him two or most likely just flip some things. You're going to coup over there. Succeed. I still... Wow. I mean, I had a lot of influence there, so it was some hard work, but I still have a Haiti, which is kind of amazing. Okay. I have to play two more cards, one of which is likely going to be the China card. Um, where is it? There's a, I could do something crazy here, because 
Playing nuclear subs is my last possible move. Again, we'll allow the US to do one coup in a battleground with some amount of safety. Um, but I don't think that's going to ruin us, and it's a good time to get rid of nuclear subs, as opposed to him playing it on his turn or headlining it, and he can just coup the entire turn without worrying about DEFCON. So we got to get rid of it. I could space a card. Or I could just hold on to these three. Depends on if I feel the need to play the China card or not. So that's it. Right next turn is, do I play the China card? Or not? So anything I dump now... Um, we'll get reshuffled on turn seven. So the question is, do I, is, do some of these things, do I want to hold on to them? I mean, I think something's going to have, to have to get played next turn regardless. During the next Middle East or Asia, subtract one battleground from the USSR total, then put this card in discard pile. Honestly, shuttle diplomacy might not be the most dangerous thing in the universe. Minister Asia, so I get one fewer battleground. Um, so they'll take some good points out of that. I don't like this. Although we want to... Well, yeah, it doesn't get removed at any point. We want to minimize how many times. This is going to be so dangerous. Hmm. If I play the China card, what would I do with it? I mean, I could spread the love to India to make sure that um, I'll have either Pakistan or India. One of them can get attacked by the, the war card, but, I mean, one of them can get attacked by the war card anyway. So if I only have one, that's going to get attacked by two. It's not like I made my position worse over there. Um, I could put two points in the Burma. Uh, no, actually, it's not adjacent to Thailand. Never mind. I could put two points into Afghanistan. It's because a total of five points, theoretically, with the China card is possible. I forgot the coups were really bad this turn because of salt negotiation. That probably saved my bacon in Haiti. Or what I could do is not use China all in China. I think I like that. I think I like one, two, three in India. I could overprotect. But with the war card, it flips everything, so it's less valuable to do it that way. Yeah, I think I'm going to send you to Uruguay. I like that. And then, yeah, I'm going to play nuclear subs as my last turn. Depending on how it goes, we could coup a non-battleground country. Keeping in mind, we do have the minus one. But we could, you know, coup Jordan or something. Or Lebanon. Lebanon is really easy to flip. That actually might be good. All right, Nasser is being played. So it's going to give me uh, Egypt. Not control over Egypt. It adds two and halves his. Ooh, it's failed. Man, these, these, con these, these modifiers. Um, well... Let's assume, let's assume we're going to put an influence in Egypt. There is, I think, a late game card that I think will flip Egypt to the Americans. But until then, that's not bad. Now, Middle East has already been scored. Still. I think we'll do this just because it's going to make it harder for him to just, like, you know, add more over here. There's going to be extra cost. I think that's going to be a decent idea. I could grab Cameron, Cameroon here, although it'd be quite easy to realign from there. Speaking of, though, if I grab Zimbabwe, I could potentially do a realignment on Zaire. Because I'll have plus two to my roll. I'll still have plus one from owning Zaire. I could reinforce Haiti, but I don't think that matters. I could put a point to Chile just to start accruing it. Um, and as long as DEFCON is two... Well, I say that. There's nuclear subs. He could do a coup on one of my battlegrounds. Let's keep that in mind. Okay, he has the ability to do a coup on one of my battlegrounds um, with a certain amount of impunity with the nuclear subs. He's got the minus one from the salt, which is still good. He could target one of the African places, like Angola, for example, because it has very low stability, but we have a lot of influence in here. I wonder if he might be more likely to strike somewhere over here. You know, or protect a few of these places. How's Europe doing? I mean, I still have domination in Europe right now. I don't think putting a point anywhere really is going to make much of a difference. I could put one in the UK just to make it harder for them to gain control over it, uh, which can screw up some of his events. I don't want him to flip Argentina and cutting me off from Chile. So I'm going to put an extra point over here to make it harder for him to eliminate me from there. Because again, he could coup here without DEFCON limitation. He's going to play Panama Canal returns for the event, which gives him three influence in some different countries. 
Perfectly fine. Okay. So salt negotiations is expiring. Nuclear subs is expiring. Done and done. Turn six. So, oh, by the way, we have more cards. Um, that was a change at some point, too. Um, we have three scoring cards. Okay, that's going to be kind of rough. So, yeah, um, in the early game, you have uh, you drop to eight cards and then have six rounds. From the mid game on, you drop to nine cards and then have seven rounds. So generally speaking, depending on things that happen with the China card going back and forth and cards that cause you to discard or play an extra card, generally speaking, you will end each turn with two cards left. So all these scoring cards, they don't let me improve my board position. The advantage is I get to choose when they fire, but that gives me, you know, less cards that I can play for events and things like that. Flower Power is really quite nice and just completely hoses the blank, the various war cards long term. Um, on the other hand, I may want to just play it as is. We've got UN Intervention, which is nice because I can use that to neuter one of the, um, the American cards. Um... Or South American. So I can play this for five. I think I'm going to headline. What if I just headline South America? And then I can mostly just forget about it. He might gain control over it in the, in the long term and get to play the second time. So there will be a reshuffling on turn seven. So the South America card will come back. You know, I think I like this. I'm going to headline this. We, we've got to, like, we're going to have a hard time keeping any tempo going on. Oh, he's going to trigger Brush War somewhere. Brush War is really good at uh, targeting. So it's stability one or two country, and you want a country that's by itself, not, doesn't have any allies nearby. Gives you the best modifiers to your role over there. Sort of a, it's sort of a bit of a coup type thing. So he's going to hit, oh, Argentina. He succeeds, and he flipped me. He also gets his military ops, so he's not going to lose any points from that. We would like to do a coup and bring the DEFCON down. We know we're going to be doing Asia and African scoring. Can we coup one of those locations? Well, let's take a look at Asia. The only battlegrounds I could coup uh, are, well, South Korea or Japan, both of which have a high amount of, um, of stability. Now, here's the thing. We know he has the Asia card. It would be nice to score Asia before he gets a chance to play that. But if I play Asia scoring, it's going to let him coup a battleground, which I don't like. So instead, I think what we're going to do is we're going to coup an African battleground, dropping the DEFCOM. Um, I'll UN Intervention some... <sighs> Middle East or Asia. So he's going to get an extra score in Asia if I play that. Um, what if I UN Intervention the Shuttle Diplomacy? The thing is, it's like overkill for some of the coups here. At least it's already been scored, although it is targetable. What am I going to do? Jordan or something? There's a card. Play it or return it. If I were to just play grain sales to the Soviets... Uh, he could draw, I don't, if he drew you an intervention, that might be really bad. Okay. We're going to play this as an event. I'm going to play this as a coup, which is potentially ludicrous overkill. Ludicrous overkill. I'm really not sure about this play. The thing is, I couldn't, I don't know what the right one was going to be. I feel like this lacks efficiency, but I think defending the DEFCON is really important. So I am really worried he's going to play the Asia card and just grab, like, just flip the scoring in Asia a fair bit here. I don't know, uh, one, two, three, four. So I have four battle lines. I mean, he can't get domination. Okay, he's going to play that just for influence. Okay, he's going to break me in Africa. We still have that. Okay, I'm going to play the Asia scoring card before he plays the uh, the China card. We still have a positive score in Africa. We might be able to get more score in Africa.
play it or return it. I mean, and this doesn't trigger with Africa scoring, and this is fine. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna play grain sales to the Soviets. Let's see. Ooh, okay, no change. I got to counter actions here. But I have I have five actions. I only have I have five cards, so I'm gonna end up. I could play this last. So any player with no cards or returned, use this card to conduct operations normally. Alright, we lost a little here. Alright, I'm going to play Shuttle Diplomacy. Uh, I'm going to place Influence. Oh, I can't take Nigeria. That's kind of annoying. I can retake Algeria. Which will be worth plus one point for a battleground control. I could over control it. I could go to Cameroon. He could coup it back. I think I'm just going to over control Algeria. So, yeah, I'm a little... If a Soviet player has no cards or return, use this card to conduct operations normally. So I think I think it's fine. I just sort of play everything. And play this last. And I think it's going to be okay. Okay, use the China card over here. Fair enough. Our goal is not the victory of might, but the vindication of right. Not peace at the expense of freedom, but both peace and freedom here in this hemisphere and we hope around the world I might just be okay with scoring Africa for one right now I don't really have a way to boost the score like there's wicked overkill on what coups of non-battleground countries I mean it would let me move in a little bit but it doesn't really matter that much do I want to play fire po flower power for the event well I don't know uh hold on now that I have the China card But it's fa I don't know how grain sales to the Soviets interacts with the face down China card. Um, grain sales to the Soviets face down China card. I actually have no idea if. Um, yeah, is the face down China card part of your hand? No, China card is never part of your hand. Can't be discarded, nor can be first to play it. Excellent. Okay, I just need to make sure that grain sales to the Soviet wouldn't trigger on this. But yeah, so it's not in my hand. Should I do something before I score here? Hey, what? I'm going to play this. I'm going to do the event first. And we can go and patch things up. Europe's scoring hasn't been played. For all I know, he's got it in his hand. Although he hasn't been doing much over here. Okay. And I'm just going to place this for influence. I'm just going to return the situation. So, there we go. Keep the padding, keep the padding, and regain control over here. I think that's fine. Now, if he makes a big plane to Africa, we can still potentially challenge it somehow. I don't know what it'd be. Queen Angola, I suppose. Would be fairly easy for him. There's a lot of influence there. But, you know, it's it's very coolable with its low stability. Uh, okay, that's going to add a bunch of influence down here. And he's using it for a realignment somewhere. Uh, ooh, no change. Man, he's having bad luck fighting over Cuba. I had plus one to the roll from Haiti. He had plus two. USA, Nicaragua. Uh, he can realign again, so he can do two realignments at two points. I suspect he'll probably hit Cuba a second time. If he thought it was good the first time, he probably still thinks it's good now. Oh, bad luck. Okay, I'll, I'll score this now. Because I, I kind of want to keep this to respond to something. Like, normally all the, all the tempo is in the Soviet hands. But I think it's going to be, we'll play this for a point or whatever, um, which ain't much, but it's something. And it, we can really, can't really do it. We'll wait to see if he does something crazy. Um, unless I want to... I, do I want to play first and solidify things? Asia's been scored. Middle East's been scored. Europe hasn't. Can I really... Can I just play into Europe and do a bunch of stuff? We already have domination. Can't, I can't flip Italy. I could break West Germany. 
I could spend two on West Germany, which would break control, and then I could spend a couple others just to make it, like, difficult for him to take it back easily. And really be terrifying in Europe. Actually, oh no, he'd still have one battle round, never mind. I might want to restore some of the holdings in Central America. Okay, I'll, I'll play this. And then we'll be ready to use our flyer power, again, to sort of defend, maybe against what whatever he's doing here. Um, could I have done a big realignment somewhere? I could actually realign Colombia fairly easily. Because I have control in two countries. He had plus one from this, I'd get plus two. Oh, I get a point because, yeah, I have the China card. He is going to get a lot from the Southeast Asia play. Well, a lot. Two points. No, I think I like it. And making it so the war cards start to suck is kind of good. But I think the influence play here is the way to go. We'll regain the influence in Panama. We'll regain it in Venezuela. Um, do I just break West Germany here? And he'll, he can recover it fairly easily, right? I put two to break it, and he puts one back in to regain um, the, the control. That being said, it does make it awfully scary for him. He's got Argentina pretty much locked in. I could get some extra safety buffer in Venezuela, Brazil. I, I mean, I could just overprotect either one. Um, at a two, I mean, they can be targeted by coups. Like, fairly well, so but... I don't know. I'm kind of okay with basically... Well, I still get points here. I don't have Domination Central America, but I'm still okay. Grabbing Afghanistan doesn't really make any difference here, right? One, two, three... Oh, hold on. Do I not have... Oh, no, I have a non-battleground. Hang on. Why don't I have domination here? One, two, three, four for me. One, two. Oh, it's just sheer number of countries. Right. I think I'm okay with this. I actually can maybe get myself in a position. Uh, but I could use the grain sales uh, to Soviets to... Oh, no, I can't coup here because it's all protected. Um... Because if I flipped one of these countries, then all of a sudden I had domination. The thing is, we're not due to score Asia. I think this is fine. So she since puts this in a very annoying situation for him. Uh, he's playing this for the event. Gives him a victory point and prevents the war from happening in Israel. And gives him a little influence in a few places. Uh, Alright, we'll play this. Um, yeah, we can resolve the event first. Which isn't going to matter. Defcon warning, but he doesn't have a card he can play from my hand. Shouldn't this just be instant? Am I wrong about something here? Why are you thinking? There, you, you, there should literally be zero cards in my hand for you to think about. I think the AI always takes the maximum amount of time to think. Wait. What? Use this card. Are you kidding me? So he just, that's what that means? Because I thought, oh, I just i just get to use the card for the operation normally. But instead, he gets to use this card. If I have... I mean, it did say DEFCON warning, but I'm like, but no. So he gets to use, so the American gets to use this card as a normal op. So all he did is he coup to Battleground to lower the DEFCON to cause their new nuclear war to start. And we lost the game that way. At least we learned something new. I mean, we were clearly on the way to winning. And there's a reason. Like, remember, I was reading it. I was hesitating. What does this mean? How does this work? And then I googled grain sales, you know, face down China card. Because I'm like, is he going to be able to use that? No, he can't do that. But I didn't google grain sales empty hand and exactly what the hell that means. Well, when you play with nukes, Sometimes you lose.
folks, thanks for watching. Um, I feel like I'm going to do another one of these. I'm clearly I'll have to make a video of me winning against the, uh, the Soviets, so maybe we'll play as the Soviets again in the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.